Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson, distinguished leaders at the head table, excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, deeply honored to be given this opportunity, and uh, I'm grateful that I have this occasion to speak to such a distinguished gathering. I would also like to compliment the GFSC for having completed 10 years of a very successful existence, and I'd like to convey my best wishes for the future. I also want to acknowledge the fact that I'm privileged to be a goodwill ambassador to UNIDO, and I know my record has probably not justified continuation of this position, because I do have a lot of goodwill, but I'm not too sure whether I've been very much of an ambassador. <clears throat> um, I think uh, <clears throat> the speeches that you've heard have essentially highlighted the important issues that I would try to cover. I think what's <clears throat> particularly important is to accept the reality that we need a major revolution in the energy sector. And what brings the logic for this requirement together is three sets of issues. The first, of course, is the serious problems that we would have in the global energy market if we continue on a business as usual basis. And here may I acknowledge the enormously useful work that's been done by the International Energy Agency, Dr. Fatih Birol, who's been leading that, is here. <coughs> and I'd like to highlight <coughs> the importance of what the IEA has done in this field. The second reason, <coughs> pardon me, I really haven't been all that well. My throat is in pretty poor shape. <coughs> the second reason, of course, is the fact that we are faced with the growing threat of climate change, <coughs> the solution to which essentially lies <clears throat> in a major shift in energy policies and development. <clears throat> and the third reason is, of course, the totally unacceptable problem <clears throat> of lack of energy access in different parts of the world and for different communities. I'm going to present a brief PowerPoint presentation before you, and this, of course, refers to the reference scenario of the International Energy Agency, where you can clearly see the trends that we are likely to be confronted with <clears throat> if we don't bring about an alteration of the forces that are currently determining our energy situation globally. And here you would see that the role of fossil fuels would continue to increase if we don't bring about a change, and that clearly has very serious implications. I want to give you an example, a micro example of this problem. I can give you the case of India, which is regarded as being <clears throat> sufficient in the availability of coal. But we know the reality today, even a country like India, which has substantial reserves of coal, really will not be able to meet demand on a business as usual basis because we won't be able to produce that coal domestically <coughs> and be able to transport it and use it. <coughs> so the outlook is that, that if India is going to use coal on a larger scale in the future, we would have no choice but to import large quantities. And that, indeed, is going to be very difficult. I would like to show you uh, the projected changes in oil demand by region in the reference scenario. And here you would see that certainly there are some regions of the world where there's a projected decline in consumption, 
uh, and demand for oil, but there are other regions which more than make up for this decline. And therefore, what we see is clearly a situation where demand would increase very rapidly, but our capacity to be able to supply oil will be severely constrained, not only by historical factors, but also the lack of opportunities for enhancing uh, the supply base in the coming years. <clears throat> now, here I would want to move to uh, what's shown on the next slide. Uh, we know that uh, as far as non-OPEC production is concerned, there's going to be <clears throat> a significant uh, decline in uh, the possibility and the potential for producing oil in the future. <clears throat> and that clearly will shift the supply base essentially in favor of OPEC. And these are issues that I think really need to be discussed within a much larger framework and context. And uh, there are clearly geopolitical and other considerations which need to be linked with this kind of a scenario. Now, it's obvious that if we continue <clears throat> on a business as usual basis, we would see much greater dependence on fossil fuels. As the IEA has shown that by 2030, fossil fuels are expected to account for 84% of the increase in demand uh, and net OECD imports are projected to decline from 58 to 52% in 2030, but we know that other regions of the world are going to account for a substantial increase, as I showed you in the previous slide. <clears throat> 